one. This one um, was made some years ago, and it's interlocking wedding rings that are supposed to move from color to color in the color wash uh, theory. And uh, then I quilted it afterwards, matching the, the embroidery that was already on the linen cloth. This one was uh, the oldest, is the oldest one of these quilts that I made. It's a crazy quilt, as you can see, that was um, inspired by an old piece of quilting that I, I saw that used a lot of dark colors. And I tried to make it exactly that with the occasional bright color interspersed, and I couldn't do that. I, um, it depressed me to use those old colors, those dark colors. So as you can see, it's all pretty, pretty bright colors. And um, then I did embroidery. I did the squares first, and then I did embroidery around the edges. This is a tree of life. There's supposed to be a tree of life in, in each crazy quilt that is made. Um, and it incorporates pieces of clothing that I made for children and prom dresses and so forth over the years. This one was inspired by a piece of music by Gustav Holtz called The Planets. And I, I guess I was listening to the music and I got the idea of having a quilt with all the planets on it. Um, Mercury, for instance, is the little green man up there. Um, I don't know if you have all heard the piece of music, but there are bells in the section in the movement of Mercury. Jupiter is the bringer of jollity. These are his, his uh, moons. Mars is the, in Roman mythology, is the god of war. And I quilted it, the dogs of war and uh, a Roman helmet around the, the planet of Mars. Then we have um, Sir Isaac Newton's mathematics here. I just had so much fun just making up stuff and put, putting it on here. Um, this is Gaia, which is James Lovelock's uh, word for the earth as, a, as an entirety. We've always scientifically looked at the earth as different parts, but he made the theory that, that the earth is a, is a breathing living entity and he called he called it Gaia. And these turtles come from uh, Thomas King's Massey lecture on uh, all about stories. The earth is uh, in, in Aboriginal uh, history or, or myth. The earth was formed on top of a turtle. And uh, the little kid called out from the audience, uh, what's under the turtle and he said another turtle and what's under that turtle it's another turtle and it's turtles all the way down and uh, this is Venus because I was reading C.S. Lewis's trilogy called Paralandra and I put a clamshell under there because of, of the uh, Venus de Milo rising from the sea in a clamshell. I think that's a Botticelli painting. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. And that the, the buttons are some of the music from, from uh, Gustav Holt's work. This next one, I made a quilt for each one of my children when they graduated from high school. This next one was, was my middle child, Jessica's quilt, and it's, spring, summer, fall, and winter. And uh, the middle part is a, a group of, of pieces made by friends and family. And then I had an awful lot of fun making the colors to go with spring, summer, fall, and winter around the outside. I got right into the creative zone and I really enjoyed myself. There's a lot of quilting there too. This little piece is made from one inch squares. 
somebody asked me if it doesn't take a lot of patience to, to do these quilts. And I think if you have to exercise patience to do it, you might as well not bother. You have to really enjoy what you're doing. And then it's just a lo lot of fun. This one I made for my granddaughter, Gwendolyn, and it, I just threw all the colorful, joyful things on it that I could. Lots of embroidery here in the middle. Uh, I didn't make this place, I just stuck it on there. But this is reverse applique, where the, the blue was underneath and the multicolored piece was on top. And instead of appliquing something on, you're folding it under and, and doing it in reverse. This one here is um, inspired by the colors of autumn. It doesn't have anything really complicated about it. It's uh, just beautiful because of all the colors. And I, I love to use all those colors in the winter time. I particularly love to quilt in the winter time because it's outside, it's all black and white and gray. And I really enjoy all that color. The one on the quilt frame is for my grandson, Nico, and it's not done. I'm working on that now. And that's my stuff. So I'll start over here and this end. And I was hoping with this uh, uh, little display here uh, that I would somehow get across the idea of these botanical prints by exposing the leaf that is printed onto the cloth. This happens to be a repurposed shirt. And there's also a little bit of uh, uh, of the botanical print uh, made in a little basket. But the idea is that it's not a surface design. It is actually a chemical reaction that keeps the uh, nature and shape and sometimes the color of the plant onto fabric. The fabric takes a tremendous amount of preparation in order for this process to happen. And tonight I brought a bundle and show you uh, what happens when you unroll one of these pieces of cloth. But before we do that, I just want to talk a little bit about the hats. Now hats are not tremendously popular the way they used to be, but I find that with my um, horrible Celtic skin, I have to wear one. And I just, oops, I'll take this out here. Like, I designed this hat, um, it, it, and the, these hats are called slat, slant brim hats. And what they do is they teach you how to sail because when the wind comes up, you have to be always manipulating these hats. But if you do it and you learn how to do it, you will never lose your hat. So, uh, also hats are designed, these hats are designed for special occasions. This is a celestial hat. You wear that at the new moon or a solstice. Uh, that's a hat made from a sweater. There's a spring hat. These hats here, I decided to work on a newsboy cap. And every one of these is different. So it's a different iteration. Like this one has more brim. Um, um, this one, I'm not sure. It's a little bit bigger. Also more brim. I wanted one that would come down over the ears. Uh, so I designed this a little different. They're all put together from repurposed cloth, some botanical prints, some stuff you find at Valley Village, and they're all lined in silk. I believe that your, your head needs to have some silk around it in order to feel correct. So, I would just mention about these botanical prints here that the yardage is something called peace silk. And this silk, it's also known as ahimshak silk or nonviolent silk. And it's the only silk that does not kill the moth, the silkworm that makes, that makes it. So it's, um, it's a very special cloth and, it, and it's alive. Basically it's alive. It's alive with these plants. 
Um, we'll move right into um, making things out of this cloth. Um, you got to do that. You got to use your things that you make and, and, and make cloth out of it. It's a simple, very simple rectangle put together. It fits everybody. This little bit of, of silk here is made from boiling rhubarb leaves. Uh, that was white and now it's not. It's a pretty rhubarb color. Um, and so I just mentioned about the botanicals. So this is matter, which is a, a wild weed. This is onion skin. Um, this is matter as well, and all different types. This is cochineal. <laughs> okay, this is silk um, with logwood and titanium oxide. This is a um, blackberry. Uh, it's very subtle. It's a blackberry branches. Um, the plants on them are all local plants, like you'll see the sumac. Sumac uh, prints extremely well. Um, some of these leaves we don't have here because I took a workshop in France and um, uh, to learn more about this. So, uh, liquid amber over here, but most of these are our plants. You see uh, lupus and ginkgo and geranium and so on and so forth. And then um, lastly, lastly, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to make these prints into clothing that is simple, but works well. Um, I'm, I'm especially interested in, in not the skinny little young people, but in the older women who don't have as much choice. Very interested in that. Here's, oh, here's some more hats. That's a winter hat. That's a Frank Lloyd Wright tie hat. This is a May Day hat. And these are winter hats as well. Here we have, uh, I'm, I'm actually wearing this same botanical print. And that's from a beer can right there. So um, I'm just going to talk just for a moment. I have uh, not much time left, but um, this is how these prints are made. They are laid out with the plants on top of them. You use something, well, I'll show you what it's called and what it looks like. This is just an ace bandage that I've wrapped around here. I had to steam this cloth for an hour and a half. Here we go, this is the big surprise. Don't know what it's gonna be like. <laughs> I dyed one piece with onion skin, and this is silk, Tussa silk. Look at that. More rubber bands. Take them off. I have this cloth wrapped around Oh, it's always hard to find a starch. <laughs> I have this cloth wrapped around a copper pipe. And here she goes. You may need, I may need a lovely assistant here. <laughs> yes, yes, it's all wound into itself. This is, I had so much trouble. Oh my gosh, look at that. I wish the light was a little better. We'll bring it up into the light after she pulls it apart. I'll give you a couple of my minutes. There's a rubber band there that melted. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. You have to steam it at what temperature? Well, it it just so that it's steaming. No wonder you melted a rubber band. This is the plant material that was. <laughs> What's the plants, Peggy? Well, um, if we could just get this on roll, I would be happy to show you the plants. All right. Here's some. Come on, you. Be nice. This is a demonstration. When I talk art, this always happened. <laughs> the demonstrations never went well. All right, here we go. So we're going to unfold this somehow. <laughs> and here you see, if you can see here where the sumac came off. And you, you learn to um, find the plants. It's all a lot of experimentation, but you learn to find the plants that will give you a good uh, print. Actually, that's not too bad, is it? That's beautiful. 
This, so this is cotton asleep. This is that thing that grows everywhere. <laughs> is that uh, Virginia? Yes, Virginia creeper, that's what it is. Uh, here we have a little bit, uh, this is a dock leaf here. Ooh. Yeah, that turned out nicely. I don't know what this plant is, but it's very pretty, very lacy. Grows everywhere, I see it here too. Erin, this is a chocolate brown. Did you say it was chocolate brown? Yeah, it, it was a, um, oh, there's another so one. that, what, this is called an iron blanket. Oh. And I'm trying to imagine all of this. It sounds lovely. Oh, Erin, you would love it. <laughs> I'm sure I would. Yeah, well, it came out awfully dark. I, I used a little too much iron on these, but uh, you see, I'm lifting off the, lifting off the plant and yeah the other one is much better what's your blanket so my blanket is also silk and what i was hoping was that i had dyed one cloth with the onion skin and i was hoping that it would go on to the other plant i put paper in between you can see this sometimes you can get some very nice prints paper prints as well from uh it creates a little bit of a barrier so that the whole thing just doesn't print 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 stephanie if you want to go under the light yeah, i might get a there so the iron that i dipped the other cloth in is it's uh, uh, iron uh, ferrous sulfate it's okay and it's very dark i use too much but it's kind of neat be nice for fall Beautiful, beautiful. It is. It is stunning. Oh, well, thank you. Ooh. All right. I think that's... So I wanted to start with my two favorite pieces. Um, I've been often asked, how were they done? So I brought a piece of material that I had screen printed. Uh, the design is actually inspired from fiddleheads. And this is exactly what I used for these two, except it was done in gold. And it's a method that I just sort of done myself and I was looking for lines. Um, they're machine stitched, there's a Sharpie, there's black ink, and then there's hand embroidery. And after I finish the piece, I go back in with a new finder and I look to see what inspires me to cut it. Uh, the top piece was uh, my main focal point. And when I was finished, I had pieces left over. I was really happy with, so I pieced those together and uh, my two favorite art pieces. So this one, uh, my first love is hand embroidery and I've not done uh, much in the last few years, but this is couched. And I did this in the start at the end of January on a piece of cloth that I dyed about 10 years ago. And the cloth I just laid or I pinned it to my design board. I never knew what I was going to do with it, but it, I knew it was going to inspire me someday. Um, COVID was the inspiration and all the words that were just, we were bombarded with in the last year sort of came rushing in and to me it works it was just um, a commotion of emotions it's a mixture of uh, dyes and inks um, Briggs and little wool is couched on with silk Toppies. So the top one is um, indigo dye, and indigo dyeing is usually done in a vat. This is natural indigo. Um, I was fortunate enough to go to a five-day workshop in Maine a few years ago and uh, discovering, but I love the pieces that, uh, that resulted. Very, very simple. I wanted to keep the simplicity of the, of the, the lines and um, it's hand stitched. It was just, it didn't need anything more in my opinion. Yeah. 
Now, this one was just a fun piece. It is, uh, I drew it on circles and squares and uh, machine stitched to a quarter of an inch on the whole thing. It's tight, tight uh, machine stitching. Then I dyed it, then I painted it, then I dyed some more and painted some more. And I was happy with the end results. It has a lot of texture to it. <laughs> so my top piece is a collection of hand dyed material, mostly silks, rayons and cottons. I was experimenting again. And uh, I was just happy with the end results. It just came together for me. Uh, there's also acrylic paint on it and hand stitching and machine stitching. So it's a combination of all my, my favorite techniques. And this, my last piece, um, was inspired by a photo I had taken in BC at the rainforest on Vancouver Island a number of years ago. And uh, I manipulated the photo and then I removed lines. Um, it's a technique I really enjoy doing. I just draw it out. Um, then I drew it onto the, the cotton. It's just plain white cotton that I used. Uh, I use a grid method when I do draw, so it's uh, copying line per line to large. I stitched it, uh, heavily stitched in most places, and then I dyed it, and I dyed it with a paste. So I mix up my dyes in, uh, in a gel, and I hand paint it on, hoping that uh, the dye sets on top and doesn't run to another area. And this one I was very fortunate with that it stayed where it was supposed to. And that's my techniques. And then you wash it up. Then yeah, you wash. then I wash the dye down. Wash the gel up. Yeah, wash the gel up. Oh, yes, wash the gel up. Yes. <laughs> that's it.